Hi, welcome to another Ableton Live 9 tutorial. This is tutorial number four, follow actions. So before we get started on um, follow actions, whoops, my little thingamajig is running here. Um, this is the global uh, quantization uh, control here. And I often have it set on something like two bars. I, get, I think default is one. And that is the sort of division where Ableton keeps things in sync. Is it going to keep it synced to just one bar? Or is it going to keep it synced to eight bars? And that's sort of like if you have a, a piece that's uh, running here, it won't interrupt it until it hits the global quantization mark of one bar. So everything starts over at the beginning of one bar. In this case, everything, well, everything that's shorter than two bars starts over every two bars. And anything that's longer than two bars has to wait for the next two bars to start over. Let's say it's three bars, it plays its three bars, and then it waits one bar and it starts over. Um, on the next two bar increment. Anyway, this um, comes into play with follow actions. And well, what are follow actions? Normally, when you're playing in session view, you are triggering things. And well, we'll, we'll see this whole two bar thing going on here. Um, and you're playing this, and I'll turn it up a little bit there. And it's playing and playing, and it'll keep doing that. And if I trigger this, you see it blink a few times, and then it starts as soon as the next two bars start. And if I do this, it's kind of the same. It blinks until it hits a two-bar divider, and then it starts playing. And if I try to stop it, same thing. It waits until a two-bar mark, and then it stops, which is why nothing ever happens instantly, Oops. but it waits for that two bar mark to stop in this case. Now of course if we have no quantization everything just runs whenever it pleases and so you'll notice that nothing blinks when you turn it on and off. As you can see it's instantaneous so everything just jumps right in there. Right? and stops quickly like that. On the other hand, if you have it all the way up at, uh, well, let's say four bars so we don't have to sit around too long. You can go like this, and this one's going to have to wait about three bars until it can start. And then as soon as, now this one's got to wait for another four bars to start. And then if we decide to trigger them all, they're all waiting and waiting for the next thing. And of course, we can trigger them over here. So when we're playing in session, view, in session view, and I mean it that way, um, a lot of times we're messing around to see how things are sounding as we um, as we try them out. But there's another thing that you can do that adds a little bit of interest to this, and that is to have one thing um, trigger another thing. So let's look at this one over here, which is called, for some strange reason, Format Zero. I'm going to double click it to get the clip editor down here. And so um, let's take a look over here. If, um, if you can't see this uh, launch window right here, then probably what you need to do is go down in this corner and click this little L. It would be black in your window. And if I click it off, you notice that it uh, shrinks that window. And if I click it back on, the launch window comes back. So that's typical of Ableton control. So now we can see the launch window. So down here, we can see this little area called follow actions. 
And what this does is it gives you the opportunity to try two different actions out, but we're just gonna focus on these three right here, which is how many bars into the clip that it's going to initiate an action, what the action is going to be, and then I'm sorry, we're not really gonna pay attention to this one, but what the likelihood is that it's gonna be this action rather than this action. But we don't need to deal with two actions. One action's enough for now. So for this clip, let's let it go uh, into the clip uh, just two bars. And after that, we're going to pick an action and say, uh, we can pick any of these actions, no action, stop, play again, etc. And we're going to say, just play the next one. And that'll be good enough for us. And so now if we come back up here and we hit play, we'll see almost as soon as it starts, the next one's on deck and ready to play in two bars. And whoops, I have my volume down, but I'll hit stop and do it again. Um, so as soon as we hit this one, then it's already thinking, hey, I've got two bars, and then I'm going to trigger this one. Now this one is just going to play and play and play around in its loop because it doesn't know what it's doing. So I'm just going to stop it eventually. And let's highlight this one and go do the same thing. We'll come down here to the follow actions and say um, after two bars, you are going to just, I like other because it just picks something random, um, anything other than itself. And it'll play that and may as well do the last one. Uh, let's just do the same thing after, um, well, we'll make it a little different. We'll just uh, cut it down to one bar. And after that, it'll play anything other than itself. Okay. So let's see how that all works out now. We go and hit the first one. And I'll turn the volume up again. So they're just kind of going back and forth here. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Finally, it's playing the last one. It's so random you can never tell whether it's what it's going to do. So that's interesting. So now uh, I'm going to just stop that. Um, so now you can see that you could sort of set up something and it has a nice, uh, like it mixes it up a little bit and you can't quite tell what's going to happen. Um, so that's, that's quite cool. I like that. But you always hear the beginnings of these, and you never quite get to it. And you might have noticed that this one is the Star Spangled Banner, for example. Or what is it? Yeah, it's the Star Spangled Banner, and then uh, this is something else, and this is some piece of Baroque music or something. Well, there's a mode where instead of always stopping and going back, it just picks up right where it left off. So let's learn some shortcuts here, too. Let's highlight all three and tell them to work in legato mode. And now they'll just go whatever they were told to do, uh, two, two, or one bar, and then they'll pass it off to another one. But when they come back, they'll pick up where they left off, which is kind of funny because you'll sort of start recognizing the songs then. So let's go ahead and start this and listen to what it does. So it's kind of funny because now we can hear ourselves making our way through the Star Spangled, 
actually it turns out the Star Spangled Banner is on the bottom and the Baroque piece is on the top, but whatever. Um, we're actually now making our way through the songs. So it gives the flavor of those songs, but it actually changes it. So that's a good way to introduce some level of uh, variety to the music. And then um, if you have another track going on over here. Now, you probably realize that these can only, um, you can only do follow actions up and down in a single track. You can't pass them off to the right or the left. So in this track, let's just, we'll just be uh, quick with this one and we'll just select all of them. And now we'll come down here to our follow action and say, okay, well, after uh, one bar and two beats, we're going to, um, uh, you know, we'll just do it randomly again. Since we selected all of them, I can't always make it play next now. So let's just say other, and um, and uh, let's see how that uh, sounds now. So now we can uh, go ahead and play this. So now you can see these are going in a very randomized order, though they're kept um, on the uh, uh, synchronized. Um, we don't know what's going to play with what. So if you're not sure how you want to organize things and just kind of want to listen, uh, this is really great. So um, let's just say, um, let's stop that. Um, you might wonder, well, I know in live I can go all the way across and have the master play these things, and we'll uh, see what happens here now when we do that. So even though I've switched number one, scene on, this one is the only one that stays here because it doesn't have follow action. But these are jumping all over the place and doing whatever they wanted. So if I just want to control this and then kind of have it always start on a certain starting point, watch what happens when we do two, all the middle ones will start, but then they drift off over here. But this will stay on, so this is kind of controlling our beat and gives us a starting point. And the same thing with three. Getting funky there. All right. So that's a lot of possibilities there, but there is finally one last thing that we can do here, and that is um, you can take, in live, you can take um, each track, and like so many other things, you can combine them together. So if I select this track and shift click this track, I can then control click on them and say, let's group these tracks. And now I've got a group and as you can see, I also have, um, it's not quite sure what to do. I think it's sort of saying, hey, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here because all of these have uh, different follow actions. So let's see what happens. So these are kind of just reacting to where these are going. Let's stop this for a minute. And it stops all the instruments under it. 
if we wanted to have these things go down through scenes, we can't have the master do it because you can't, um, you know, I'll highlight number one here, and it, um, it doesn't have its own um, uh, follow action, or at least I believe it doesn't. So, but you can do uh, group one here and say, well, I want it to follow to two, and I want that to follow to three, <coughs> and then go back to the top. So that's one way to do that. But to do that, we um, want to remove any of the follow actions from, uh, sorry, from, I'm just uh, trying to shift click here so I get all nine of these. I don't want any follow action, so I'm going to come down here and click no action, and that's going to remove all that and put no actions on any of these. So then I can come up to my first one here and say, okay, now I want to, I could say I want to go uh, three bars and go to the next. And then with this one, I can say I want to go three bars and go to the next. And then with the last one, I can say I want to go well, let's just go one bar and uh, go back to the first. So now we've removed all the follow actions from these, and these are going to hopefully play in order as they're supposed to. And we see them all doing that very nicely. Now, stop that real quick. One thing to consider, though, is that if you do want these to um, uh, jump all around within that framework, you can actually do that. And you can um, turn the uh, affect that by um, saying, you know, okay, I do want these to jump back and forth every, uh, let's say, two beats, or one bar and two beats, and then they're just going to go anywhere. So, um, and I'm going to turn this down to um, half half a bar so that they don't uh, run into trouble, and, and let's see what happens here now. So now you see they're, they're, these are kind of jumping out of sync with the other ones because they're changing faster. So it introduces an element of uh, randomness to that. But as you can see, uh, track, well, they call it three and four, I would say two and three, um, are staying in sync because they don't have follow action. But number one keeps jumping out after uh, a bar and two beats. So that's a whole bunch of exciting things that you can do um, with follow action. And I hope that kind of gets you started to sort of making some pretty cool instrument groups, uh, instrument racks, if you will. And uh, that's really it for today. So I will see you in the next tutorial.